Welcome to EPG Patashala. My name is Dugira Lavasanta. I am on the teaching faculty of Department of Linguistics at Uspania University, Hyderabad. Um, I will be uh, talking today about uh, uh, course 10, Psychoneurolinguistics, module 25 on semantic dementia. The objective of today's lecture is to talk about the nature of human memory and focus on semantic memory and how this semantic memory breaks down in the case of semantic dementia and explain little bit about the neural basis for semantic dementia. Uh, dementia is a very general term. Dementias can affect memory, attention, behavior and language. So, with non, uh, the neurologist diagnose somebody is having dementia when there is non-focal, progressive, neurological disorder affecting brain structures and their function. Mm, these are some of the different types of dementia, frontotemporal dementia, FTD, semantic dementia, SD, which is a variant of FTD, that is one variant of frontotemporal dementia, corticobasal degeneration, subcortical dementia, Alzheimer's dementia, or senile dementia of Alzheimer's type, STAT. Alzheimer's dementia is AD. In uh, literature, you might find the word SDAT, which is basically Alzheimer's, but it is, it, uh, it is abbreviation for senile dementia of Alzheimer's type. The time uh, the AD, that is Alzheimer's, was coined by Dr. Alois Alzheimer in 1906 to describe a 51 year old patient whose problems included language deficits. But the focus of this module is semantic dementia. In semantic dementia, there is a progressive reduction of grey matter, especially in the temporal lobes. Initially, it starts in the left hemisphere and gradually it can spread into the um, right hemisphere. Also, parts of the medial temporal lobe uh, can also be involved in semantic dementia. Uh, one of the characteristic features of semantic dementia is loss of word meaning, okay, I, both in production as well as uh, comprehension and also before, but then uh, in, before going into details of what exactly happens in semantic dementia, we need to understand um, the different components of human memory, which is what we have shown in the picture that you will see on the screen. Notice that human memory has three major components. There is a sensory memory where information uh, stays only for less than a second. And from sensory memory, the next level is the short term memory, where information can stay up to about a minute. After that, you have the long term memory, where information can stay the lifetime. It is a long, that is why it is called long term memory. Now, the long term memory has two major components. Uh, it is the explicit memory and the implicit memory. Declarative memory is all about memory concerning facts and events and one aspect of this memory is episodic and the other aspect is semantic. So, in semantic dementia, patients lose semantic memory all about facts uh, um, concerning concepts and that is what happens in semantic memory. So, uh, look at the figure you know, at, uh, more carefully to understand these different components. So, semantic dementia affects the semantic memory component of declarative memory which is part of long term memory. So, look at this that uh, explicit memory component of the long term memory uh, which is also referred to as declarative memory, um, you know, which deals with facts and events, uh, which is episodic memory, um, uh, you know. Uh, about autobiographical details like uh, your birthday or your marriage day or the day you went to school and things like that. And the other component is the semantic memory. So, it is a semantic memory which is damaged in semantic dementia. So, what is semantic memory? This memory contains information about living or non-living thing. This dichotomy is extremely important when we are discussing semantic dementia. Um, we have knowledge about living things, non-living artifacts, man-made objects, knowledge about living things. The reason why we make this distinction is 
um, it has in uh, cognitive uh, neurology and neuropsychology uh, they have noted that knowledge about living things relies more on sensory perceptual information okay whereas knowledge about artifacts is based on function all right so living things is about the color the size and the shape and you know sensory perceptual information artifacts is all about what is it used for like that so all but whether they are living or non living uh, man made objects or whatever they all be, belong to different semantic domains so let's look at on the screen you are shown a picture of uh, domains or fields semantic fields uh, whichever domain we talk about um it uh, it has three levels okay there is the superordinate level the first level the top level okay so things can be vehicles furniture or animals so this is the superordinate level and then there is a basic level in the middle so if you say vehicle basic level term is truck if you say furniture basic level is chair if it is animal basic level could be fish just an example i am giving uh what about the last level the third level is called subordinate level so vehicle uh, at the subordinate level you have pickup truck uh furniture subordinate subordinate le level you can have kitchen chair animal uh, instead of fish trout if you actually specify the type of fish that would be the subordinate level so uh, storing information at these levels and how it gets impaired is what we need to learn in order to understand the problems of semantic dementia also e even when you narrow down to one particular lexical item what all do we know about that item let's take the example of cat and you examine the figure shown on the screen called semantic network for cat so cat is an animal then you know it you know something about mammals and vertebrates and cat has fur uh um, bear also has fur uh, but um, uh, if you look at mammal whale is also a mammal uh, but whale lives in water uh, just like fish uh, so all these uh, look at the connections you know these are concepts mammal is a concept vertebrate um, uh, is a concept animal um, you know and specific items like bear and fish and whale and then water is another concept and they are all connected and we we have an idea of what is what what these connections are and that's how we store that concept in our mind so our knowledge about lexical items uh, which we receive from um, the world through vision by watching by hearing by sen by smelling by moving um, motor sensory and by listening to verbal descriptions from other people around this information about objects become one unitary representation and it gets stored in our brain somewhere right in lexicon somewhere in st uh, such mentally stored uh, lexical semantic representations lose their richness they become sparse that is what is st is all about in semantic dementia the otherwise rich multimodal information is obtained from all these modalities vision audition olfaction touch so this multi modal rich mental representations become sparse for some reason how do you test for semantic dementia you can use test like category fluency you give any category and uh, ask them to name all the fruits they know all uh, furniture they know all the animals they know Uh, and fast in one minute they have to name uh, you draw something and ask them to draw immediately and then give some uh, break 15 20 minutes half an hour later from memory you ask them to draw that and you see what happens i will show you that picture little later on about the results of delayed drawing uh, in the case of semantic dementia word picture matching letter fluency you say um, i'll Uh, give you three okay i'll give you a letter f uh, you name anything you know about uh, any word that starts with f quickly i'm you know looking at my stopwatch name then you give a name s 
say as many words which start with A or S or F or whatever letter, letter fluency, card sorting, digit span, vis visual spatial abilities, object space perception. So, these are all typical neuropsychological batteries that neurologists use to diagnose semantic dementia. But you might wonder at this point that how do you differentiate the problems of semantic dementia from old age problems? What about if when you grow old, do you automatically become semantic, you know, do you become, you acquire? Not quite. As one ages, one experiences changes in the way we are able to process language based information. There is some deficit, but it is not like semantic dementia because there are no age differences in uh, uh, deciding uh, when I flash a series of letters and I ask you, do you think this is a word in your language? 80 year olds can say yes, uh, even uh, 10, uh, 15 year olds can say. Lexical decision, there is no age difference. But they did find some age different age effects uh, in rec word recognition, alright. Lexical decision is only being able to say is it a word or not a word, but what word is it, does it match this picture. Uh, so, when you make the task a little more difficult, some little bit of age effects are there, but they do not resemble the problems that semantic dementia patients experience. Uh, for instance, the, um, uh, I came across a study of 70 to 90 year old non-semantic dementia patients uh, did exhibit some level of syntactic processing problems. That is especially if the, uh, uh, the sentence that they are asked to understand and perform some action is very complex and also there are very few semantic redundancy cues. So, in such cases older people exhibit some impairment in processing uh, sentences uh, which is somewhat similar to the syntactic uh, impairment that you note in semantic dementia patients. Uh, so, but patients with uh, semantic dementia, their main problem is uh, with lexical semantic representations, I told you it becomes sparse. In addition, there are two other key terms that you have to remember, um, semantic dementia patients exhibit what are known as reverse concreteness effect. That is very often most of us are able to identify concrete nouns better than abstract nouns is it is understood, there is logic in it, but semantic dementia patients show the opposite. They have problem with concrete nouns, they do not have problem with abstract nouns and they also have what are known as typicality effects, ok. Some what is uh, typical about a particular animal, typical about a particular fruit, ok. There are some problems with that. Uh, so, does it mean that semantic dementia is an acceleration of changes associated with normal aging? We do not know. This is a question that researchers are trying to address. What is this typicality effect that characterizes semantic dementia? To understand this, you need to look at the picture shown on the screen. Notice the patient was able to reproduce the picture of the hippopotamus relatively well uh, few minutes after seeing it. Uh, but then after some amount of delay when he was asked to recall and draw the picture again, he left out the typical characteristic, typical feature of hippopotamus that is the horn on the head. Notice in the picture there is no horn. That is after some time is elapsed, the patient was not able to recollect that very feature which is typical of hippopotamus, alright. This is what is the typicality effect which you notice in semantic dementia patients. So, let us look at the next picture of the brain and I said anterior temporal lobes are damaged because there is some evidence saying that anterior temporal lobes uh, are involved in storing and uh, you know of lexical items belonging to persons in one area, uh, animals in another area, tools in another area. That is why uh, you can have category specific damage uh, in semantic dementia. In other words, some semantic dementia patients fail miserably in uh, naming, uh, recognizing animals. Uh, you show 
10 different animals, every single animal they say cow, you show a monkey they say it's cow, right. So, you can have category specific damage in semantic dementia. Some other patients can have problems with tools, they can't recognize tools, okay. So, in other words, uh, there is the lesion site is uh, the temporal lobe, anterior temporal lobe. And also, the, I have mentioned that uh, the other neural basis for semantic dementia is atrophy, shrinking of the uh, cranium, I mean the, the outer part, you know, like you can see in early semantic dementia, uh, it starts in the anterior temporal lobe in the left hemisphere, but late semantic dementia, you see to your right, this is a, uh, it's, it has spread into the uh, other side also, both right and left hemisphere. Uh, the black part is the damaged part in a SD patient. Uh, a neuroimaging study, uh, positron emission tomography study has revealed this damage. So, what exactly is happening in semantic dementia is, there is more or less consensus that in semantic dementia, there is an erosion of semantic memories that is not uniform across modalities. So, they might have erosion of visual memories, they might have you know some of the auditory memories may be lost. So, the modality specific loss of uh, stored information of lexical semantic representations uh, can be noted in these patients. It affects verbal semantics more than non-verbal semantics. This erosion results in pruning of concepts and concept boundaries. So, there is one uh, study done by a French scientist in 2010. In this, what they did was, uh, this is a study of verb production during action naming um, and all the patients uh, were, uh, there are 5 semantic dementia patients and 17 control normal patient people, adults, uh, they are all French speaking people, participants. Uh, they were shown video clips of lots of actions that are happening in the video. Participants have to name, use a verb to describe that action in French, right. Now, the errors of semantic dementia patients reportedly contained huge portion of generic verbs, not specific verbs. Meaning, uh, if they were, if there is an action of somebody peeling an orange, you are required to say peel, right. Whereas, the semantic dementia patient said um, remove, I am giving the English uh, words corresponding to the French words because I do not know French, but remove is a general word, peel is a specific word. They were only able to say remove but not peel or orange. There were some other abnormal responses, for instance, instead of peel, they said undress. You do not substitute peel with undress, especially if what is being shown is orange, right. Um, so, they also demonstrated lack of specificity of meaning representation as well as lack of semantic relatedness ability with respect to commonly, very commonly used verbs. Um, I have also described two case studies from the Indian context, um, Telugu I think patients in the e-text. Uh, which reiterates this uh, idea of how um, semantic dementia obliterates uh, one's ability to use specific verbs. They are able to use general verbs, but not specific verbs. And I think um, in the Telugu data, for instance, uh, there are ways of, there are several verbs which describe the way you cut. The way you cut, um, you know, beans vertically, the way you slice uh, will have one Telugu word, uh, the way you chop a carrot into big blocks, uh, you use another word, uh, the way you break uh, a thread, you have another word in Telugu. You have many verbs of breaking, cutting, uh, tearing, all right. So, I remember the semantic dementia patient we examined. Uh, in uh, Nizam's Institute for uh, Medical Sciences here in Hyderabad, uh, the patient was about 55, 56 year old and all she could say was cut cheyu, that's it. No matter we showed 
nearly 60 videos she kept repeating cut cheyu cut cheyu cut cheyu all the works are lost so i uh, suggest that you look at the e text for uh, discussion about this patient uh, semantic dementia in telugu to summarize this lecture um, uh, recall that we started with the definition of dementia and then i went on into semantic dementia after showing you the major components of human memory we came down to the semantic dementia relates to one part of long term memory and uh, that it uh, that what happens in semantic memory is uh, oblit obliteration of the rich semantic lexical semantic representations uh, of living things or non living things or actions or events from the world and uh, then i the, talked about uh, neural basis for semantic dementia especially drawing your attention to um, the deterioration or damage to anterior temporal lobe initially in the left hemisphere but the uh, that shrinkage um, you know also uh, the atrophy uh, spreads to right hemisphere also as the disease progresses and i have talked briefly about neuropsychological tests with which neurologists diagnose semantic dementia and um, uh, also shared some information about how the mistakes uh, semantic dementia patients make uh, in uh, naming verbs action verbs um, and i uh, there is some information in the e text uh, talking about um, how semantic dementia patients uh, use general verbs as opposed to specific verbs uh, and this information is in relation to telugu uh, i have not gone into details in this lecture but i suggest you go back to the e text to read the case history and the kind of mistakes the telugu speaking semantic dementia patient made uh, in describing videos of actions of cutting breaking and tearing work uh, if uh, and also look at some of the readings that are listed in the e text thank you